Okay, hi everyone. Let's continue our discussion for uh, layer production, particularly the uh, management practices ano, uh, for layers. Okay, so such as light management practices, uh, egg collection, and then kasama na rin dito yung egg grading ninyo or yung tinatawag natin sorting of eggs and then yung uh, culling. Okay, at the latter part of this video, I will also be discussing yung feeding management um, together with uh, health management. Kasi konti lang naman na yung topics for um, those two. Okay, so let's start with light management. It is important, no, as I have previously reiterated and emphasized that light management plays a crucial role in the production performance of the laying flock. So, what do we need to do? Okay, so we have here um, increase light duration or yung tinatawag nating length of light provided when pullet or the pullets have reached minimum body weight. Okay, of course, minimum body weight, as I have always uh, told you, this depends on the strain, on the variety, or on the breed of layer chicken you are using. Okay? And then, another one is to provide a total of 16 hours light. Okay? So, 16 hours light, tatandaan ninyo yun. To get the maximum response from the lighting program. Okay? So, 16 hours light has sa laying stage yon. Sa grower stage, mas konti yung uh, number of hours provided, light hours provided. Okay? Um, so, opposite siya ng laying stage yung playing stage opposite ng grower stage. Okay? Uh, what else? It is also important to note that during the laying period, the length of light or yung duration of light may be increased but should never be reduced. So, hindi pwedeng babaan because sabi ko nga natin, light is important in the egg production performance. So, from the 13 hours light na binibigay natin during the grower stage, okay? So, ibig sabihin, before the pullets reach sexual maturity, you have to provide them 30-minute light increment per week hanggang sa ma-reach nila yung 16 hours na kailangan sa laying stage, okay? So, from the 13 hours provided during the grower stage ng chickens, we give them 30 minutes na light increment. So, every week, nag a tayo ng 30 minutes light duration para hindi abrupt yung transition or yung pagbibigay natin ng light. Okay? So, para gradual lang din. Tulad lang din ng uh, feeding management natin na gradual yung pagbibigay ng or pag-shift or pag-transition ng type of feed sa animals. Okay? So, 13 minute light increment per week hanggang sa maabot nila yung 16 hours light. Okay, to get the maximum response from the lighting program. Okay, so for what can we deduce from this, no? From all of this. Laying chickens must be provided with light during the entire laying period or yung tinatawag nating laying stage because yung light kasi it stimulates egg production. Since it affects yung light, it affects yung release of yung follicle stimulating hormone na tinatawag natin galing sa anterior pituitary gland. Ano yung silbi ng FSH or yung follicle stimulating hormone that is important in the development of the ovarian fo follicle na siyang magiging egg. Okay, so light is important. Tatandaan ninyo yon. So in terms of egg collection, uh, alam natin na laying hens are expected to produce one egg every day, lalong-lalo na kung na-reach na nila yung constant na egg production or yung um, constant na oviposition or egg laying. Okay? So, one egg per day sila. Okay? They are capable of doing this. Okay? Especially kung proper yung management. But, it is next to impossible to realize that one egg one day. So, one egg is released per day for long periods of time. Kasi, it takes, sabi dito, it takes 26 hours for an egg to fully develop or fully form. So, syempre, we only have 24 hours in a day. So, may mga araw na mag-skip yan mga itlog. So, some days are skipped because 24, we need, tw we need 26 hours, no, for the egg to fully form or develop. Okay, so some days are skipped. 
But most probably, one egg per day yung uh, iitlog ng hen. Now, we have here oviposition. So, this is actually the, uh, the act or manner of egg laying. And this takes place normally or usually as early as 7 a.m. Nangingitlog na yan. To as late as 4 p.m. Okay? So, uh, madalang lang yung nangingitlog sa gabi. Okay? So, usually 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. sila nangingitlog. But, majority of the hens lay their eggs between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. But, the common observation is that egg laying usually takes place before noon. Okay? So, usual na observation yon ng mga farmers, ng mga producers, or ng, na na-observe ng mga researchers natin. So, yon tatandaan ninyo. So, may mga advantages. So, sabi nga natin, one egg per day, although some days are skipped, yung um, egg production or yung frequency ng egg production ng, uh, ng hens. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, we have to egg, uh, collect the eggs more than once. So, more than once, ibig sabihin nun, hindi lang once a week, hindi lang once a month. So, dapat frequent as much as possible, we have to collect eggs more often than once. So, um, as much as possible, daily. Ano, ina-observe natin. Because it has these following uh, advantages. Number one, eggs can be kept in the, in the uh, storage room where favorable environmental conditions can be provided. Okay? And then, avoid egg breakage. There are instances when some layer hens accidentally trample with the eggs. Number three, avoid exposure to environmental or to unfavorable environmental conditions. Okay? Um, the eggs kept long in the nests, in the pens, or in the cages are liable to be exposed to high temperature. Lalong-lalo na ngayon, summer, mainit yung panahon. Okay? Umaga pa lang, mainit na. So, there are studies or minsan na-experience din natin yung nagsustore tayo ng eggs. Siyempre, hindi naman natin makakonsume lahat yung binilin natin na eggs. Hindi naman natin maluluto lahat. What happens is that yung quality ng egg lowers. Kung mapapansin ninyo yon, yung egg white becomes less viscous. So, mas hindi na siya malapot. As compared to, kung fresh yung egg kasi, mas malapot, mas intact yung egg, egg yolk and egg white. Okay? So, yun. Uh, yun yung mga kailangan nating isipin when we are storing uh, the egg. So, um, may mga um, studies or articles na nagsasabi na yung shelf life ng unrefrigerated eggs, ibig sabihin na store lang siya at room temperature, 7 to 10, 7 to 10 days yung shelf life ng egg na yun. Pero kung nilagay mo siya sa ref or sa cool temperature, Okay? It takes about 30 to 45 days yung shelf life ng egg. Pero may mga uh, households ba na nagsustore ng eggs for 30 to 45 days? Di ba? Minsan nga, nagkoconsume tayo ng one egg per day. Or there are also those na nagkoconsume ng one egg per meal. Di ba? So, siguro hindi naman naabot yung one tray ng itlog for one month or 45 days. Ano? So, ang kailangan lang nating isipin, um, huwag nating hayaan na ma-store yung eggs in a high, uh, or in a warm, in a very warm or hot environment. Okay? Okay. Next is, we have to minimize dirt. Uh, it, yung frequent egg collection uh, minimizes dirt and dust. Okay? This is essential um, because uh, we can limit, no? Yung frequent egg collection... Uh, limits the number of dirty, dusty, and damaged eggs. When we collect eggs, hindi na-accumulate yung dirt or yung dust. Kaya, ayun, maiging mag-collect tayo more than once. Okay? And then lastly, frequent uh, egg collection is essential to prevent the hens from eating the eggs. So, minsan tinutuka kasi nila yung kanilang mga itlog. Okay? And then we have here egg grading. So after egg collection, eggs should be sorted. No, eggs should be classified. So when we say egg grading, this is the manner of sorting the eggs into different categories. So based on some parameters such as weight and size. So there are farms which use weight as basis. There are also those farms which use size as basis. So what's the difference? Yung weight kasi mas objective siya. So, mas uh, quantitative siya in nature. Yung size, 
mas qualitative siya in nature. Okay? Although there are, uh, tawag dito, there are criteria okay, used in determining the small eggs, medium eggs, large eggs, uh, extra large eggs, etc. Okay? But to be consistent, mas okay yung uh, sorting according to weight. Okay? What else? Mm, egg grading is important because egg size, apart from egg quality, you know, is one of the major determinants of profit profitability. Okay? Of course, bigger eggs no, tend to be offered in higher prices, di ba? Kung na-experience ninyo yun, uh, lalo na sa palengke, palengke, kung bumibili kayo or pumupunta kayo sa palengke, minsan, may mga uh, eggs na nakalagay sa trays and meron silang labels. Mer ito, 4 for 22 pesos, meron ding 6 pesos ang isa, 7 pesos ang isa, etc. And makikita nyo, ang difference nila is larger yung size, higher yung price per egg. Di ba? So, that's the importance of egg grading or yung egg sorting na tinatawag natin. Next is culling the hens. Ano? When we say culling, this is the identification and removal of non-productive hens. When we say non-productive hens, hindi na sila nangingitlog, malimit na silang mangitlog, low na yung egg production nila, etc. Okay? Uh, sometimes, we call this as selective culling. Okay? Selective culling kasi we are selecting or determining hens which to cull among the laying flock. Okay? Uh, and as a general practice, Culling can be executed at any time if it is necessary, okay, that some of the birds must be removed. So, maring meron kang nakitang um, isa sa kanila or dalawa sa kanila or some of them uh, may mga sakit, may mga pilay, pilay, uh, ano ba, yung hindi na maganda yung characteristics, it does not conform, yung characteristic na does not conform anymore to a good layer, uh, good laying characteristic, etc. So, it can be executed at any time. Okay? So, what else? Culling increases uh, flock productivity and profitability kasi one of the factors that influence the profitability or the productivity of a layer flock operation is the rate of egg production. Okay? And when we cull, we are actually reducing the cost of production reducing the incidence of diseases and increasing available space for uh, the more productive hens. Kasi again, whether or not the hens lay eggs, they still consume feeds, they still consume whatever input of production you are uh, using. No? So, kung ano man yung nilalagay mo doon sa laying house or doon sa feeders or waters, nagko-consume sila. So, to reduce yung cost of production mo, to reduce your expenses, tanggalin mo na yung mga hindi na nangingitlog because you are not getting any benefit from them. So, hindi ka na kumikita sa kanila. So, better to call them. Ano? So, yun yung calling. Next, uh, as mentioned kanina, diba, the number of eggs produced or the rate of egg production depends on the presence or absence of poor and non-productive layers. And ano nga ba yung tinatawag nating uh, good layers tsaka bad layers? What's the difference of uh, layers and non-laying hands, no? Okay? So, often times, nadadetect natin yung mga uh, non-laying birds or poor producing hands by observing their uh, body conditions, their head conditions, their comb conditions, the characteristics of the out outward characteristics, no? Or the outer appearance, no? The comb and wattles, tinitingnan natin sa layers. Kung, lay kung good layer siya, meron siyang large, bright red, and glossy comb and wattles. So, hindi maputla, hindi dal, hindi shrivel. Okay? Sa head, neat and refined. Okay? Makita mong masigla siya, etc. Hindi siya weak and beefy. Ano? Sa, sa eyes naman, bright yung eyes niya, not dull and sunken. So, yun. Uh, Siyempre, makita mo yun if you are um, uh, a keen observer, no? Makikita mo, yung, makikita mo yung difference ng bright eyes and dull eyes, okay? And then, yung eye ring, bleach for layers and yellow tinted naman kapag non-layers. Makikita mo yun. Sa beak, pareho, bleach and yellow tinted. Bleach for good layers and yellow tinted for non-layers. 
Okay? Kasi kung ma-observe mo, kapag nag-start ng mag-produce ng eggs yung layers, mawawala na yung, or mag-disintegrate, mag-disappear gradually yung yellow pigment. Doon sa beak niya, doon sa eye ring niya, doon sa shank niya usually, mag-disappear yung yellow na pigment. Okay? So, kung hindi nyo pa na-observe yun, try to observe. Ano? Uh, what else? Sa abdomen naman niya, kapag good layer, it should have deep, soft, and pliable abdomen. Okay? Kung non-layer siya, makita mo na shallow yung abdomen niya, tough, at saka tight. So, dapat deep and soft and pliable. And then, sa pubic bones, kung mapapansin niyo if you have learned in your ANSI 20, yung uh, pubic bones, saan, saan ba makikita yung pubic bones? Doon sa baba or part ng abdominal cavity or yung sa region na yun. It should be fle flexible and wide apart. Okay? And kung non-layer siya, stiff siya and close together. together. So, dapat uh, malawak or mahaba yung width ng uh, pubic bones. Okay? Or if you spread them. And then, vent, it should be large, moist, and bleached. So, ano yung, ang opposite kasi ng bleach, para siyang nagpo-whiten. Kasi na-disintegrate yung yellow na pigment. So, yung opposite ng bleach is yellow yung pigment niya. Okay? Uh, sa lay, sana, kapag non-layer yung hen na yun, small yung vent niya, so hindi makakadaan ng maayos yung itlog. Ano? Dry. So, kapag dry kasi yung vent, hindi rin makakadaan ng maayos yung itlog. Okay? And that is also yung packard din, yung non-laying hens. Yung vent ng non-laying hens. Okay, so those are the characteristics of good laying hands and poor laying hands. So I hope you are able to uh, distinguish uh, between the two, the two. If you recall, meron akong pinos doon sa FB group natin. A link of a YouTube video um, distinguishing yung characteristics ng uh, good laying hands and yung poor laying hands. So, I hope you are able to review or watch yung video na yun since konti lang naman yung uh, duration or yung number of minutes para makita ninyo visual view, para ma-visualize ninyo, okay? Para ma-differentiate ninyo kung ano nga ba talaga ang itsura ng uh, good laying hands and poor laying hands, okay? Because sa uh, yung setup natin ngayon, virtual, no? Hindi tayo makapag- Although, meron tayong um, poultry house doon sa nagbaksan, meron tayong poultry project doon, we cannot go physically. Ano? Para makita natin yung ano ba yung tsura ng good laying hands and poor laying hands. Okay? And then we have here, sabi ko kanina, i-discuss ko na rin yung feeding management. Uh, recall natin na feeds comprise or constitute 75% yung cost of production. So, either that could be cost of production sa layer, cost of production sa broiler, or cost of production sa swine, etc. Okay, so, importante pa rin yung proper feeding. So, when we say proper, proper feeding, feed them at the right time, with the right kind, or amount of diet. So, kailan natin sila papakainin, ano yung papakain natin sa kanila. Okay, of course, kung uh, across ages, so across physiological stages or growth stages, iba-iba yung pinapakain natin. Okay? So, gaya din lang sa swine, kapag um, piglet stage pa lang siya, starter yung binibigay natin, etc. Same is true with sa chickens natin. Okay? So, 0 to 6 weeks old, chick booster or starter yung binibigay. 6 to 12 weeks, grower ration. So, this is the time when um, they have already been uh, released from the brooder houses. Okay? So, nasa grower houses na sila. 12 to 18 weeks, pullet developer ration. So, nagsisimula na silang mag-develop uh, ng secondary sexual characteristics. Okay? So, when we say pullet kasi, hindi pa siya ng itlog. So, nagsustart na yung sexual maturity nila. And then, 18 to 42 weeks, Yan, binibigyan na natin sila ng uh, layer or breederations. Depending kung, uh, by the way, this depends no sa uh, program ng isang feed company. Okay? So, this is still depends. Meron nagsasabing 0 to 5 weeks, starter pa lang. Meron din nagsasabing 6 to 14 weeks, ganito ang hibibigay, etc. But, what is important is gradual yung pag-shift ng feeds or ng diets across stages. 
Okay, so I hope you were able to learn the principle of uh, shift from one feed to another. Okay, next, dito sa table na to, this shows you sa first column, feed provided or the amount or quantity of feed provided in terms of feeders. And yung second column shows you the percent of feed wasted. Kung binigyan mo siya ng feeds, completely full yung feeders, so ibig sabihin, punong-puno yung feeders, pinuno mo ng feeds, 30% non ma-waste or ang tawag dito, matatapon, either hindi nila i-consume lahat, etc. So, 30% of the feed is wasted. Pero kung two-thirds full yung binigay mo lang, so hindi mo pinuno, two-thirds lang ng feeders, 10% yung ma-waste. And then kapag half full siya, 3%. And then kapag one-third full, so one-third of the feeders lang yung nilagyan mo ng feeds, ang ma-waste lang or matatapon or hindi mo consume is 1%. So, yun yung... Um, yun yung relationship, no? Yung the amount of feed provided and the amount of feed wasted. So, mas maganda, paunti-unti lang yung pagbibigay mo ng feeds. Ano? So, kapag naubos nila yung unang binigay mo, edi dagdagan mo ulit. Hanggang sa ma mapansin mo or ma-observe mo na busog na sila. Okay? So, I have here indicated that water no, should be made available at all times. So, as much as possible, bigyan natin sila ng fresh water unlimited, in unlimited amounts. Okay? Um, usually, kapag 0 to 6 weeks old or kapag day old chicks pa lang sila, first 6 to 8 hours after the arrival of the chicks, binibigyan natin sila ng um, sugar. Okay? Nilalagyan natin yung inumin nila ng 5 to 10% sugar. Okay? To stimulate the gut. Ano? Okay? Now, let's move on to the last subtopic under layer production, and this is health management, okay? The most economical and ideal method to minimize losses due to diseases is, of course, through health management, or tinatawag natin yung prevention and control. And this could be achieved by, of course, proper management, no? proper feeding, proper housing, strict sanitation, effective vaccination program, yun. Kung uh, kamit natin to, na achieve natin yung lahat ng to, proper management, hindi problema yung, um, yung health. Okay? But, syempre hindi natin ma-avoid no, yung occurrence ng diseases, most especially if they are communicable. No? Meron talagang nangyayaring disease outbreaks. And if these disease outbreaks occur, ano, you have to consult immediately na yung veterinarian. Okay? So, ito yung mga usual vaccines, no, administered. We have Mar Marex vaccine, NCD vaccine, Fowlpox vaccine, etc. Okay? And if you will be majoring in animal science, uh, a more detailed explanation or elaboration of all of this, no, uh, will be emphasized or will be discussed on each of the topics sa uh, animal science. Kasi if you major in animal science, we have major subjects such as swine production. So, isang SEM yan na didiscuss yung swine production. Isang SEM din na didiscuss ang poultry production. Isang SEM din na didiscuss yung ruminant production. Isang SEM din na didiscuss yung uh, animal nutrition. Isang SEM din na didiscuss yung, um, yung animal health or yung diseases. So, yun. So, maganda yung mga topics natin sa uh, major subjects. Kasi... Sa ANSAI 21, you are just given an introduction. Kaya nga ang title ng ANSAI 21, ang course title natin is Introduction to Livestock and Poultry Production. You are just given an overview or a background of the four commodities. Commodities yung swine, yung poultry, okay, yung layer and broiler, and then yung sa ruminants, yung large and small ruminants. Yung beef production, uh, beef cattle production, and dairy cattle production. So you are just given... Uh, an overview. But what I did was I consulted, although most of my topics were from the module, but I uh, referred from other references para mas malawak or para mas uh, diverse yung references. Although pare-pareho yung principles, pero para mas maganda yung mga examples, yung mga elaborations or discussions, I referred from other um, books or from other um, articles or research articles. Okay, so... This ends my discussion for the layer management. Next, My next topic would be uh, broiler 
production. So, I hope you were able to uh, jot down notes. I hope you were able to um, to learn something from my discussion. Thank you very much and I will be sending you my uh, next video on broiler production.